Earlier, we briefly saw that to describe the class refillable ballpoint pen, in addition to having the existential restrictions we defined and which are inherited from the parent class ballpoint pen, we also need to specify that refillable ballpoint pen is the set of individuals that have at least one relationship along the property has characteristic to the specific individual called refillable. Recall that refillable is an individual of pen characteristic. How do we go about specifying these semantics in OWL? Well, we cannot use an existential restriction to model this because we have a distinct individual involved as opposed to a filler class. In this case, we need to use what's called a has value restriction. A has value restriction is identified for the term value. The restriction acts along a property, in this case has characteristic, and then we specify the value to be the individual called refillable. If we make that restriction applicable to the class refillable ballpoint pen, we are basically saying that for something to be a member of the class refillable ballpoint pen, it needs to have the specific characteristic of being refillable. Let's see how to specify a has value restriction in Protege. First, we'll browse the class hierarchy and identify the class we want to create the restriction for, in this case, refillable ballpoint pen. Click the add button next to where it says subclass of in the description pane. A dialog will pop up. This time we'll switch to the class expression editor tab for creating the has value restriction. We saw the format in which to write the restriction we need. So let's start by typing has characteristic. Remember that we can start typing a few characters and using the tab key to autocomplete, we can select the required property with the up and down cursor keys. So we'll select has characteristic and hit the return key. Then let's add a space and type value, which indicates that we're dealing with a has value restriction. Notice that the term value is highlighted in a different color. After value, let's add another space. And then let's start typing the individual refillable and use the tab key to autocomplete. There's only one individual of pen characteristic that starts with the letter R, and that's why it gets pulled straight away. Click OK to return to the class view. And here we are. We've created a has value restriction for the class refillable ballpoint pen that says that for something to be an individual of refillable ballpoint pen, it is not only necessary for it to satisfy the restrictions inherited from its parent class ballpoint pen, but it also needs to have a relationship along the property has characteristic to the specific individual refillable. Let's go through another example to describe designer ballpoint pen. This time we'll create two has value restrictions, one to say that it has the characteristic of being expensive and another to say that it has the characteristic of being refillable. So let's look for designer ballpoint pen in the class hierarchy and select it. And we're now going to add our restrictions. That's the first one added. Let's do the same for the second. And we finish up with this. Great. Now that you're familiar with what a has value restriction is, your activity before we complete this lecture is to create a few has value restrictions for our different types of ballpoint pen. I'd like you to create the following has value restrictions. One restriction for custom ballpoint pen along the property has characteristic to the individual customized. One for disposable ballpoint pen along the same property but to the individual disposable. Two has value restrictions for erasable ink ballpoint pen with the first one involving the pen characteristic erasable ink and the second one involving the pen characteristic called upside down usage. Then we need another similar restriction for rollable pen involving the pen characteristic water based ink. And finally, I'd like you to add three has value restrictions for space pen, one involving the characteristic underwater usage, another one involving upside down usage and the third one involving zero gravity usage. After completing this task, your different types of ballpoint pen should now have descriptions that look like this. And I'm sure you've nailed it down, so a massive well done to you for getting this far. In the next lecture, we'll explore the differences between primitive classes, which we've seen so far, and also what's known as defined classes.